Okay, hello YouTube. It's uh, Monday the 28th of April 2008. So, um, this week I've mainly been playing, like a lot of people I suspect, with the new Web SDR project. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, there's a link over in the video description. Um, this is a project at the University of Twente, I hope I'm saying that right, in the Netherlands, um, which basically allows people to listen to a radio over the web. Now there's not particularly anything innovative just in that, but the very cool thing is it's um, software-defined radio, which means that loads and loads of people can control the radio simultaneously and even listen to different frequencies. Um, so yeah, you can um, listen to kilo stations, you can narrow the filters, you can listen to speech, and the waterfall display also shows you many really big string signals. And it's, yeah, it's an amazing project, and it's looking really good, and uh, hopefully they'll uh, they'll continue uh, developing it a bit. Uh, if you go and have a look at the website, you might see that the wiring still uh, leaves a bit to be desired. Um, but yeah, um, so that's what I've mainly been looking at during the last week, and uh, it's actually great for me because um, I don't actually have a radio here at the uh, University QTH. So yeah, it's a really cool project, and the fact it just runs using a couple of Java applets in a, in a normal web page um, is really excellent as well. So they've done a lot of really cool work on that. Um, one thing it did like get me thinking about though was about how this is going to help amateur radio in the future and what this is going to contribute to amateur radio in the future. You know, I think that the internet's playing a larger role in, in amateur radio um, and it's great to see amateur radio moving forward in the 21st century. Um, I guess that's partly what this blog, vlog is about. Um, just trying to show what, show what we're doing here in uh, 2008. Um, but the whole idea of remote control linked with web SDR, I suspect, is really going to change the nature of amateur radio. And we've done see um, the, the beginning signs of that already. Um, you might have heard that the DXCC award program um, has had a consultation going on um, about whether what how remotely operated um, how remotely operated stations can count for DXCC, whether they can count for DXCC. Um, I'm not entirely sure whether this whole consultation thing was really well advertised, um, but yeah, it was going on sort of mid-February, beginning of this year, and um, apparently the news I've been hearing is that the earliest we're going to hear a public declaration on this um, is going to be July, so I'm sure the DX community is really going to be listening out for, for, um, for something on that. Um, it's going to have a huge impact on awards. Um, I ought to say, well, I mentioned that, that uh, some of you might know I'm involved in IOTA, so um, yeah, here's a disclaimer. All comments are my own personal comments and not intended to affect the current or to influence the future policy of Radio Society for Person and the Anglia Award Program. For me, the link between amateur radio and the internet is like the, the coolest thing that's happening at the moment. And there's loads and loads of really good work that's been happening for a couple of years, Echo Link IRLP. Um, in the, in the early days, and now some uh, things like this web STR. Um, and it's really changing the nature of the hobby. Now, where I stand on this is the fact that governments give us spectrum um, basically for free. It's commercially valuable spectrum, and yeah, there's, there's international agreements and things that make them do it, but we're very lucky to get this spectrum um, that, that we have access to, particularly at uh, VHF and UHF where it's the most valuable. And uh, they give us that, why? Well, I suspect it's because of the science and technology training that we provide as radio amateurs, and also the potential for emergency communications. Now, both of those really rely on us um, being really up to date with technology. Um, so, yeah, I guess what I'm saying is that amateur radio is going to be really changed by this link with the internet. Um, and I think it's something that we mustn't let hold us back. I can't see governments giving the spectrum for free if we're just playing around with radios that haven't really changed in their basic functions since the 1960s. The governments aren't going to be willing to give away the spectrum for a historical hobby um, if we don't let the hobby move forward, if that makes sense. Yeah. 
I guess what I'm trying to say is, is we've got to really keep up um, with with current current trends. Otherwise, we're going to lose our spectrum, and the hobby's not going to be able to exist anymore. So yeah, I just really wanted to get your your opinions on that. How do you think that amateur radio and the internet are going to really work together in the future? Do you think there's a role for them in the future to work together, or do you think that amateur radio should stay as it is? Because any change we make are going to be really controversial. I don't want to preempt the decision that's been made, but um, if the XCC suddenly opens it up to remote operation, then you know a lot of the whole point of it, many people will feel, is being taken away. Um, you know, it's not about your signal getting as far just on its own merits anymore. Um, and that, that's really the whole point of DXing at the moment. So um, there's going to be a lot of complaints if they, if they were to allow remote operation. And yet, as I say, if they don't allow it, um, then, you know, well, are we just fossilising the hobby for the future? So, yeah, um, comments below or feel free to give video responses, something like that. So for me, this whole web SDR and the internet link uh, with Amateur Radio is really exciting. And of course, I need to say a big well done to M3PHP, Pete and Paul, M0TZO, for getting the uh, trophy, the Kemmel Trophy, at the RSGB AGM in Bristol, a uh, weekend before last, um, for their excellent work on handtests.co.uk. Um, yeah, so well done guys. Um, it's great to see the internet being used for amateur radio training. Pete, M3PHP, you just won the award for amateur radio training. You really need to go and get your intermediate license now. Also on the same topic, um, youngham.net. Um, it's a brand new service for young hams, as it says. Um, but go and have a look at the website. It's launching on the 1st of May. So if you're watching this as soon as this video goes online, it won't be online yet. But after the 1st of May, go and have a look at youngham.net um, because it's looking really good. I've had a little preview look at it. And um, they're going to be doing a podcast as well, which I think is really exciting. So yay for them as well. And also, finally, um, big thanks to all my subscribers. Um, I hope you're going to find this vlog really interesting. Um, I, just in case there's any more that come in the next few days between when I'm recording this and when it goes online on Monday. Um, I'm not going to read your names out now, but they should be scrolling along the bottom, hopefully, if I get to work. Next Monday, uh, it's Bank Holiday in England. Um, it's the May Day Bank Holiday that is actually on May Day. Um, so, yay. And it's also, as each year, it's the Dartmoor Radio Alley, which Dartmoor Radio Club is my local club when I'm back at my home QTH. I'm going to be going out there and um, helping to run the rally. Um, I'm also going to try and vlog from the rally. I'm not entirely sure how this is going to work yet. It could be an absolute disaster, I could have loads of people looking at me thinking what the hell is this twat doing talking into camera. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try and vlog from the rally. So uh, yeah, tune in next Monday to see how that goes. Okay, thanks very much. 7-3, bye!